have you ever met a human NPC and you try to wish for the mercy of death? Really, all you do is damage reduction. However, the only thing that happens is you get deeper and deeper into a hole. Well, here's what you can do to get out of this situation. Because, it, it, I mean, this situation is pretty dang common to people who want to turn every conversation that's possible to into a deep conversation in some form. You know, you, I mean, ne- every time somebody asks, how are you? It's just another brain cell that bites the dust. Anyway, in everyday conversation, okay, in trying to change a rehearsal of the weather or whatever these NPCs are talking about. Oftentimes the best response is simply why, how, define something or specify something. Now this is actually the best response for so many reasons because it's a hidden, subtle, weird, albeit, but it's not too weird so as to already uh, in weirden or, you know, it's not a real word, isolate or just otherwise alienate you from the other person's NPC nature. You hereby can tell what the other person is going to, it, you could tell what they are and you could tell if it's actually possible to actually have a deep conversation or if you just got to retreat, cut the losses and let that one go. You know, you got to let them float. The NPCs are kind of like, um, they're kind of like patches of blackness in the void. You want to save them, you really want to save them, yet if you try to, you're just going to get stuck out there because there's nothing to save. You're chasing ghosts. There's nothing you can do, bro. you got to stop. you got to forgive them for everything they've done. Realize you could have done the same given the circumstances that they probably had. I mean, and you just got to do what you got to do. So <laughs> this is why it's so funny, too. Watching the plebeian commoner squirm back to the routine rehearsal of the weather of what their kids are doing of what happened last night of their stupid joke they've been telling literally since high school there's nothing there's nothing sadder or funnier than this okay so watching that shall test your ability to keep a straight face and hey every third or 10th, or if you're unlucky like me, every 30th person will actually respond. And the following deep conversation you thereby segue into makes worthwhile all the shallow previous. Beautiful. It's beautiful because even if it all it takes is one conversation to justify 100 bad ones. All right, I don't know about 100, but at least 30, probably 100 as well. It really does. It really does. Uh, And so that was just a little bit of advice. Now let's go up here. Let's get back into um, my cat is absolutely going to town on the cord. The mic is connected to. Let's hope he doesn't chew through it. Actually, let's hope he does because then you wouldn't have to listen to my stupid big forehead any longer, right? All right. Anyway, let's go to this 89 here. Laziness easily morphs a man into a vessel of justified hatred. That's the key, right? Because hatred is, is rarely, if ever, unjustified. That's what people get wrong about it. That's why the game of good and evil is a game and not actually. All right, but I'm talking about essays that you guys are not aware of. So that probably sounds a little bit crazy. Today, I'm just going to try to do very simple. I'm just going to try to let you guys see what I'm talking about rather than throw the references and drown you guys in a pool of references, none of which you have ever seen before. The fiercest opposition to this laziness defined probably as Satan, and you can read the little definition there. Fiercest opposition is known as God, more accurately defined as any, but more precisely, all of this. That which is farthest from evil, whose only lack is limitation, whose only hell is his love for man, and who thrives and grows at man's choice to love when he should hate. Thus, we have a God who is not necessarily a being, but rather, you know, 8 billion of them or whatever the population is, I have no idea. He's not even necessarily omnipotent or even celestial in the normal, in the way we think he is, but very well, he very well could be. He very well could be all of these and more. It is reconcilable with Christianity and a a, a stark... uh, low-level Christian especially, would be like, uh, no. 
no, 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 this is not, this is not true. But actually, if you actually press them and go, why, why? And after five times, why, why, why? There's actually no difference between this God and their God because they're both the same one. They're both the same one God we've both come in contact with, or at least if I'm talking to someone worth our salt has come in contact with. It's just through different forms and perhaps to add different depths if I may so rudely say so, but hey, the truth bites, kid. If you don't meditate, you have not you have not communicated with God in the you have not you have not met God in the in the in any way. You haven't done anything with God until you've meditated. Relatively speaking, it's possible to do do things. It's it's possible to have epif epiphanic moments. Is that how you pronounce that epiphany moments. Uh, it's possible to have. Uh, those 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 beatific visions on your own but it's so rare and when you do it in meditation with an intent you it's deeper it's realer it's you are aware of it the whole time it's not a surprise it's more rational it, it, there's i mean i could go on i could go on for days And his, I mean, and he very remember he very well could be a being. It's just beyond our wavelength of thought. If you say there cannot be a god, well, you cannot be right because we just don't have the senses to tell for sure. We have five senses, my friends. How many senses were to tell to know what truth meant? Now let's go further. How many how many senses would it take to tell if God existed? Not five. Not at their current at low resolution. Uh, performance i'll tell you that much now is anything scarier than the possibility of him watching everything think about if he actually was real in this in this being sense your every action is watched is that scarier than the alternative being no one is watching but of course the unconscious which is not precisely you so it's kind of comforting at least well it depends on how much you know about the unconscious if you don't know much it's probably scarier because your thoughts are not private you heard that correctly your thoughts cannot be private because only 0.6 of what's in that skull of yours is you consciousness is outnumbered by its older wiser brother we call the unconscious and we know practically nothing about it and just i'll just put it this way we know nothing about the um, consciousness. We don't know how it's produced. I have a theory about how it's produced. Plenty of people have theories. We don't know a thing about the, about the consciousness. The unconsciousness, Jung and Jungian heirs are like the only people who even try to know about, the, about what's going on with the unconscious, really. So that's all you, I mean, that, there it is. We have no idea, and for all we know, the unconscious is the thing that is the repository for God. <laughs> you kidding me? I mean, it actually is, and many, actually, that's factual in many definitions of God. And I and some people were pointing out we have to have a singular definition of God in my last video, and that's simultaneously really correct, and I love that because that's obviously a precondition for any sort of intelligibility you have to have you have to agree on singular definitions well i mean and you know some words you got to accept have many more than one definition but words like god you got to have a singular definition if you want to get somewhere but at the same time my other half is going well is a concept so uh so transcended from definitions can that concept be constrained, jailed, imprisoned, enslaved to a singular definition if that definition doesn't quite have the breadth it must? Right? I mean, I mean, you see this definition right here. This is like, this is a big, this is a big little piece right here. That which is farthest from God, or that <laughs> God is the, the God is that which is farthest from evil, whose only lack is limitation, whose only hell is his love for man, and who thrives and grows at man's choice to love when he should hate. That's God. That's a big definition itself, but that's kind of just one jumbled definition. There's probably hundreds of definitions that are accurate. And so when it comes to the definition of God, I really should define him, but I already have, first of all. And secondly, if you want to define God in just a few words, you're already playing a dangerous game. 
I mean, if that's your singular definition and you don't want to accept any others, it's a dangerous game. And so we got to be careful. I think there's a little bit of an exception with God. We got to be careful because remember, we don't have the senses to know if he exists. How the hell would we have the senses to define what he is? Are you kidding me? Nietzsche's, uh, what I'm reading right now, uh, this book, this spoke Zarathustra. Nietzsche said uh, in one of the pages, God... God is that, that which I do not know, or something like that. And so that just illustrates, well, maybe if our knowledge is like an iceberg and we are only the tip that points out that, that sees daylight and the iceberg underneath is kind of, you know, a world of ice and it's just the underworld, that underworld is God and the one conscious aware peace is uh, us so we don't what my point is we cannot define god accurately to 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 kind of constrain us and really restrict the limits to really um would the word be delimit i don't know to really just constrain and jail our um conversation with a singular definition of God would be to do just so. And instead of free spirits talking and having a wonderful, spontaneous adventure to truth, it's now more of a unburdened, tight, restricted uh, sentence, you know, because that's what happens when you restrain God, something that cannot be restrained. Because remember, his only lack is limitation, right? What is the only thing God lacks? It's a good riddle. Limitation. Limitation is the only thing he lacks, and like that's something that's kind of insane, right? So how can we limit him by just having a singular definition? You can. We can try. We can try. I'm, I'm totally open to having a real debate in the comments with that, and how we would do that best. I'd love to see people define God just in their best, most accurate way. This is what it means to me. This is what it means to me. It'd be beautiful. God colon what your what you what his definition is. Please do that. We can do that. We can, and I can actually prove my point, hopefully. but well, maybe I'll be wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm completely happy to be wrong and, and admit it because I actually read the comments unlike any other YouTuber, which is the dumbest decision ever. If you want to be a good YouTuber, just read the comments and respond to them. No, of course, but no one on YouTube is. No one on YouTube has the time because they think their time is too worthy. No, it's not. If you're talking about something, if you're talking about something valuable, you can learn from your commenters, especially in a video like this. I've already learned plenty. Are you kidding me? Number two, well, you just don't give a shit about your people. I mean, man, maybe you have 5,000. Okay, hire somebody to do the other 4,500 while you just do what you can manage, or the other 4,900, or the other 4,999. 4, Whatever it takes, man, you got to get in there. You got to interact with the people, bro. How can you know what, who your fans are? I mean, it, there's just on a thousand levels, I don't understand the YouTuber's lack of, of, of critical thought. I mean, I have a broken hand right now, bro. I, I have one hand. Now, granted, my left hand, I'm such a good typer. Uh, normally, it's like 120 words per minute or higher. I could probably do 130, 140 if I, if I, if I, not with great accuracy at all. But my left hand, albeit, can type average speed or over average speed just by itself. So it's not that, it doesn't take long for me to type and reply to comments, but it's still not easy to do it. I mean, but, but, but I do it because it's worthwhile. And that's my point against the YouTubers, the other retards. Anyway, I shouldn't say the other retards. I should probably just say the retards. Cover my bases there, right, right, buddy? All right, now, um, I'll go ahead and leave at that. What's the other one? I think there was one more. Yeah, yeah, let's, well, maybe we'll do more. I definitely want to do this one as well. When a man says he is short of God, that he has proof, that he has factual knowledge of what will happen to his soul, a definition we're lacking after death. Are we to believe these justified beliefs or press deeper and twist the knife into the, by definition, lying neural constellations? That is him. And this is, and why do I know that this is by definition lying? Well, because a knowledge is just a justified belief. Why is one evidenceless knowledge better than another knowledge? It cannot be. Now, in this definition, knowledge is just the knowledge uh, of, of abstract belief-based 
evidence requiring things certain things in life just to to not go into the weeds let's just say some things in life like tying your shoe and driving to work you the, these are hardly justified beliefs these we can put into a category of knowledge that is kind of more on the factual concrete unchanging side okay i'm talking about the more malleable side of knowledge all right so your worldview how optimistic you are i mean your personality your iq even hell these things are constantly changing and i can prove those last two by the way personality and iq they don't change often rarely but they can definitely change Def especially if you're under 25 they definitely are still malleable at their core not that they are changing often or for the general people or for the unspecial npcs who by definition hate to nothing more than change but for those of us people who like these videos people who like to be challenged and to self-challenge we are the ones who accept this rule we are the exemptions we change quite often if i may so if my if i may say so myself and the day we stop changing that's when we know we've failed and we're not if our beliefs are the same two days in a row exactly that's when you know you failed and there and you can take a hyperbolic reaction to that and say dude you're just stupid you can't change your neural everything daily you're gonna go insane well i don't mean everything i just mean you have to be in a constant evolution your beliefs should always be changing in the sense of deepening right strengthening forging that steel thicker you know what i mean hopefully you do if you don't it's too far you're too far gone not really you can totally not understand anything now and then through a couple of years understand later that's what i did watch the jordan peterson and sam harris debates if you want to know what i mean that's they those have a decent barrier to entry in my opinion if you're 150 iq maybe it's not maybe there's no barrier entry to you barrier to entry this is to say are we to challenge this christian belief in god in the spirit of change of truth of loving when perhaps we should hate in the very spirit of god are we to challenge god and this christian's god and his beliefs and his dogmatic stuff or are we just supposed to accept his religion as the one correct religion my friends oh crap Ha, look what I'm looking. Look what I'm. Look what I'm searching here. Ha, ha. All right. Uh, I once heard it's a really interesting phenomenon too. There's study. The studies say uh, light alcohol consumption. There's a few studies uh, su suggesting maybe a light alcohol. Uh, is or even moderate alcohol use, which they defined as like five, less than five drinks per week, less than six maybe, as healthier, especially for the cardiovascular health, than complete sobriety, extended sobriety. And I'm like, what? What? That would be, I like, I've been missing out if that's the case. So I'm looking that up and seeing what's going on. I'm trying to see what's going on. Let me know, comment about that if you have any uh, wisdom on the alcohol, on the optimal al alcohol use for, you know, someone who's obviously an adult. Though it might not seem so, I assure you, my friends, I assure you. All right, now, my friends, I once heard God whisper. Though I admit to only subpar translation of his articulationless language. Behind your eyelids, in that space between what's wrong and right, that's where you'll find me, smiling and wait and want for my child to see. God, I don't know if I, I think I'm hating. I, I don't, I, my, my, my dramatic voice. I hate my voice and I hate myself, but I kind of want to kill myself after that little performance right there. I'm sorry for that. I deeply apologize. I would try not to do that again, but I cannot promise. So, no, I cannot promise. All right, the low-level Christian would have an aneurysm to learn his God is lower than his Satan and my God is higher than his God. That didn't sound poetic because I didn't write, I didn't read it as I wrote it. But again, I have to kind of simplify because I just think people's verbal 
people don't have people have high verbal intelligence in this day they have but the aspect of verbal intelligence where it's the written form the the iq just drops off on average and that's not total, that's not statistic at all that's completely anecdotal it's probably totally false but that's just my uh inclination to that's just the proclivity i've seen witnessed in my generation <laughs> it's gen z is so retarded gen z is going to be the wisest generation ever but uh, hitherto of course not ever i mean only we'll have, we'll have a short reign like every other previous generation almost every generation is wiser than its forebears for the simple reason of every subsequent generation has another cycle of evolution cerebrally and so it's like it's no wonder you're going to be smarter than your parents and if you're 25 and if your parents could just magically become 25 again, you compare these people on average, the um, later born group is going to be smarter in IQ and even, well, wisdom is actually another completely different argument. You could argue wisdom is going down, but intelligence, no doubt, is going up. I think you'd be hard pressed to make. I really have no idea of wisdom what that would be i can't even make it make a hypothetical prediction whatsoever but cycles of evolution uh generally assuming the cognition the demand for cognition is always increasing which i don't think you can make a case that it hasn't and that it won't continue to at least at least predominantly given that yeah you're going to be smarter than your parents but like at least a, at least a negligible amount at least and is any amount of intelligence negligible really isn't that a fair isn't that a paradox i don't know in my opinion it is a paradox because there's no wisdom or intelligence that's a that's negligible all right indeed let's go on so let me let me let me talk about this behind your eyelids bro in the space between what's wrong and right that's where you'll find me hiding waiting for you in want and wait ready to teach the child to see but the child first must be willing and if you don't meditate if you don't go to that space between behind your eyelids between what's wrong and right toward the psychedelic mirror of self-reflection deep within the walls of your skull if you don't go there and search and stare at yourself that malevolent demonic stare you're going to see in the mirror that is of your very self or rather and or and or of the unconscious which could be even scarier i don't know I don't know. This, quite frankly, both of them terrify me. I could not tell you which. What, what, what's what's scarier to you? There, are, what would be hypothetically? Answer this in the comments, please. Not to. <laughs> would it be your stare, the consciousness's stare, your stare meaning, or would it be the uh, the stare of the unconscious? Which would you be scared more scared of? All right. Uh, what is this footnote doing here? Oh. All right, let's do um, let's do one more. Let's do one more here. What's my time at? Twenty three minutes. All right, we'll do a quick last one. Quick last one to a genuine man, a high in trade openness. Most people he encounters, he directly or indirectly considers labels and judges as NBCs. He can't help it, even if he's being happy. So, so yeah, even if he's be, even if he's acting happily and has cultivated the skill of happiness and is acting accordingly, so he's still going to indirectly and unconsciously consider people NPCs. You have to, you have to. It, without that, your standards go down. Your floodgates are you, the, 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 it wouldn't work. You'd be start you start associating with idiots, and you start to become them. You have to judge people as this or that, at least unconsciously. You you have to. Try judging everybody equally and, and correct your behavior every time you don't because it's impossible, by the way. You, it won't work, but just try. You'll end up with people you don't want to, you never wanted to end up with and who aren't people that they don't even want you to end up with them. You don't, they, just, you have to, especially if you're high in trade openness. You can't repress the judgment. The judgment is not necessarily a vice. It can be, but it also can be a virtue because you can judge, oh, this person is nice. This person aligns with uh, my interests. I'm going to hang out with him. But this person right here, this person is just an asshole. I do not want to hang out with him. That's just judgment right there. That's positive. 
people get conflated because everything can be a vice. Everything that is a, that once was a virtue can also obviously thereby become a vice if you take it overboard. So it'd be really confused, especially with anxiety. People get really confused with whether that one is it's a virtue, by the way. I can prove that in another video. I will next video, maybe. How dreadful a fate for this man who has to pretty much pretty much is drowning in NPCs. How dreadful a fate. I weep for him. Then I remember I am him. And likely so are you, dear viewer. Dear reader, dear viewer, you're both. Well, so weep for us both. But weep harder for those who don't weep with us. Because, and you see the insinuation there, you see the implication. These guys, the NPCs, they can't weep with us because they don't understand. So we, have, therefore, have to weep harder for them. I'm explaining this to you as if you didn't understand it like you're a five-year-old. You understand. I'm just trying to em emphasize the tragic fate we have, which is to be misunderstood by most people. And I tried, I've tried. i tried my best this video to just keep it simple, to rely on the writing, because my writing is much harder to misinterpret and uh, attack even. It's harder to attack than my word, than my spoken words. My spoken words are wild. They're everywhere. I'm not a, I'm not a speaker. I'm not a talker. I, I did a YouTube, I've done a YouTube channel for a long time. I'm still not a speaker. I've, I've been a writer my whole life. I'm not a speaker. I'm not a good speaker. I might be able to speak intelligently in pieces. You know, there'll be glimpses of that in every video, hopefully, but that it will be consistent is inconsistent. And uh, so that's why I just tried to, because of this phenomenon we just talked about, and uh, it's, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. If you're one of us, you know what I'm talking about. It's very difficult to get into a deep conversation, and this one ties into the first passage we went over. It's very difficult. Remember those tools, by the way. Why, how, define, specify. Just ask them to specify something or define something, and you'll see them like, oh, <laughs> it's like they almost flinch. Like, whoa, I don't want to do that. I've never been asked that before. I, they have to actually work in a conversation, which they become accustomed to with their NPC brethren, not working in ever. The NPCs want effortless conversations. They don't want to put any effort. But if you want, if you're like us, you want there to be effort. You want to develop through discomfort to an extent because you know pain and pleasure are tethered, my friend. Comfort and discomfort are tethered. Well, actually, that one, that one's more complicated, but pain and pleasure are tethered. And if you don't put effort in, well, you don't have as high a potential to gain anything, obviously. And for a thousand other reasons as well. But the NPC overlooks this. And uh, I will stop ranting about him because he's just... I, I could rant about this guy's, this guy's hellspawn. Hellspawn. Necessary hellspawn, but hellspawn nonetheless. With that being said, weep harder for those who don't weep with us. All right? I'll see you later.